Georgia Tech football is in a very bad spot. This once prestigious program has become the laughing stock of the ACC, has absolutely no identity, and their coach is now nicknamed a used car salesman. The Georgia Tech football program has been on a downfall for a couple of years now, ever since Paul Johnson retired and they moved away from the triple option. When Collins was originally hired away from Temple, many thought he could bring a new style of offense to Georgia Tech and combine that with good recruiting and a fertile recruiting area can make Georgia Tech into a sleeping giant in the ACC. Except that has not been the case at all. The Yellow Jackets have become the laughing stock of the ACC, they're constantly getting blown out, they're not competitive, and they have pretty much lost the entire fan base. The night that Jeff Collins was finally fired from Georgia Tech, and in today's video we're going to talk about his rise, his coaching career, his time at Georgia Tech, and what ultimately went wrong. I'm also going to offer some future coaching candidates for the job and give my overall thoughts on the direction of the program. But before we can get into that, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so quickly be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you want to support the channel, give me a player or topic I can take a look at next, and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's get started and talk about the tragic downfall of Jeff Collins. So going back in time, Jeff Collins was born in the state of Georgia and ended up playing linebacker for Western Carolina. After that, he immediately went into coaching and would get his first big start as a graduate assistant in 2001 with Georgia Tech. After that, he'd go back to his alma mater and become the defensive coordinator for Western Carolina before he'd become a recruiting coordinator for Georgia Tech. In 2007, Alabama would actually swipe this guy up and then he'd get his first major college football break as he'd become the defensive coordinator for Florida International. After that, he would become part of Dan Mullen as he would go over to Mississippi State and become the defensive coordinator for him in 2014. After that, Collins would go to Florida and become the defensive coordinator for one year before he was seen as a good enough option to be hired as the head coach at Temple. His time at Temple wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. He went 7-6 and six with a 4-4 four four mark in 2017, where they ended up winning their bowl game. In 2018, they went 8-4 and four with a 7-1 and one mark in the conference and ended up going to the Independence Bowl. He went 15-10 and 10 there, and eventually, he was seen as one of the next Power 5 coaching hires. Where would he end up going? Well, he would go to Georgia Tech. This would end up happening in early December of 2018, and here's what one Georgia Tech site had to say about the hire. Quote, Collins, at 47 years old, is seen as energetic and innovative. He has a reputation as a strong recruiter as well. In the second of his two stops at Tech in 2006, he was credited with helping put together one of the best recruiting classes that included Derek Morgan, Jonathan Dwyer, Morgan Burnett, and Josh Nesbitt. Another member of the ACC called Collins, quote, ahead of the curve. Yeah, Jeff Collins was actually seen as a pretty good hire as he was someone who was young, energetic, had a lot of experience, and could recruit. Now the big question was, could he do it at a program that would have to move away from its identity and have to rely upon a lot less funding? Here's how it would go. Jeff Collins' first class was not highly ranked, but the first test would come in his 2020 class. It ranked 28th in the country, which was very good for tech standards, and actually brought in a couple of big-time players. They brought in four four-star recruits, headlined by big-time running back Jameer Gibbs, former Florida State quarterback commit Jeff Sims, four-star corner Miles Brooks, and four-star defensive end Jared Ivey. But going back one year, in 2019, the team would not have a great start. James Graham was the starting quarterback, Jordan Mason was the team's starting running back, and Marion Brown became the best receiver. Tech opened up on a Thursday night game on the road against number one Clemson, and I cannot think of a harder way to start out your season. They ended up losing 52-14, but in week two, they would show some promise as they would beat South Florida at home. You know that isn't the biggest win in the world, but compared to what Collins is doing now and where USF used to be, that was seen as a decent win. But that was very, very short-lived, as in the following two weeks, he'd show what he was truly about and where the program was. They lose at home to the Citadel 27-24 in overtime, and then against his former school Temple, they lost 24-2. Yeah, they only managed to muster up a safety in that one. After that, they got killed by North Carolina, got killed by Duke, and then had a pretty weird game. This one sucked for Miami fans, as Georgia Tech ended up winning 28-21 in overtime. Tech went back to their losing ways, as they lost three straight games, including a 45-0 shutout at the hands of Virginia Tech, and a 52-7 beatdown from their rival Georgia. First season did not go well, as they went 3-9. But as I said, they had a pretty decent recruiting class coming in. In 2020, they were starting to build a little bit of momentum. Jeff Sims would now be the starting quarterback as a true freshman, and he would throw for 13 touchdowns and also run for six touchdowns. He was a dynamic threat, and then combining that with Jameer Gibbs and Jordan Mason, 
Tech had a pretty good ground game going. They also had Jalen Camp, who ended up getting drafted as a receiver, and this would translate to some wins, right? Well, not quite. They would beat Florida State in week one, 16 to 13, and this has become one of the better wins of the Collins era, but after that, they went back to reality. They got killed by number 14 UCF at home, got killed by Syracuse in week three, and then lost 73 to seven to Clemson. Clemson has not been Jeff Collins' friend so far, but mixed in there, they did beat Louisville, who was a preseason ranked team, and they did compete with NC State. They would end up getting killed by Notre Dame though, and lost to Pitt, so things were not going that great, and their only other win came against Duke, as they won 56 to 33, and that Duke team was horrendous. Once again, Collins only ended up winning three games, and he now had six wins in two years. Year three was going to be very important for him. Led once again by Sims at quarterback and Jameer Gibbs at running back, Tech was expected to have a better year. That is not what would end up happening. In week one, Northern Illinois would come to town, and while the Huskies actually ended up being pretty decent, they lost this game 22-21 at home, and this set the tone for year three, and they were already way behind the eight ball. In week two, they would end up beating Kennesaw State, before they'd probably have the most heartbreaking game of the Collins era. Down 14-8 against Clemson, the Tigers ended up making a goal line stand, and number 6 Clemson survived this game. After that, they would in fact get the best win of the Collins era, as the Jackets would end up beating number 21 North Carolina 45-22, but the Tar Heels were pretty overrated, and that game exposed them. After that, they got killed by Pitt, beat Duke by 4, and then the losing really started. They lost close games to Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Miami before their last three games were terrible. They got beat pretty bad by Boston College, and then lost 55-0 on the road against Notre Dame, and 45-0 against number one Georgia. Both of these games were absolutely horrendous, and the saddest part about the Georgia game was not only did the team not show up, but neither did the fans. This was a home game, but it was a red game, as Georgia fans traveled really well, and in these last two games, the Jackets got outscored 100-0. Collins went 3-9 with a 2-6 mark in the ACC, and no progress had seemingly been made in year three. After the season was over, their All-American all-purpose player in Jameer Gibbs left, and a couple of other highly touted players also decided to leave. Add in the fact that Collins' so-called good recruiting was now ranked number 42 in the nation, and this had a lot of people calling for his head. Many wondered if Collins would survive the end of the year, especially after those last two games, but it was announced that he'd be coming back for a fourth year, and at that moment, I saw so many Georgia Tech fans basically throw in the towel. They view Collins as a guy who can't win, can't recruit, can't coach, and is a used car salesman. Would anything change in 2022? The answer was no. He brought in Zach Gibson and Tyson Pomachon at the quarterback spot, but ultimately Jeff Sims won that job. At running back, they brought in Hassan Hall from Louisville, but so far, Dante Smith became the main guy at running back. Wide receiver has been a struggle for the Jackets over the last few years, and that once again has been present this year. The Jackets were not expected to win much, and many believed Collins would not make it through the season. That is exactly what would happen, as in week one they'd open up against as in week one they would open up against Clemson. For a while they were actually pretty competitive, and they held it pretty close with the Tigers, but then things fell apart in the third quarter, and Clemson pulled away for a 41-10 win. The Jackets were once again undisciplined, the offense was non-existent, they shot themselves in the foot, and they were non-competitive for the second half of that game. Week 2, they'd come back home and beat Western Carolina 35-17, but that offered no optimism to the fan base. Week 3 was once again another test, as they'd have a home matchup with number 20 Ole Miss. This would end up being another devastating loss, as Ole Miss would win 42-0, as Georgia Tech could get nothing going, and obviously was blanked. Some were wondering if you'd get fired after that, but they were to give him one more game against UCF. This game came on the road, and while UCF will be a Power 5 team, they are still a Group of 5 school. This is probably the most competitive they have looked this season, but once again they had some dumb mistakes, like a blocked punt, and just couldn't get anything going on offense, so they lost 27-10, falling to a 1-3 record with an 0-1 mark in the ACC. In his first three years, Collins went 9-25 and they've lost nine straight games to FBS opponents, and the last three were by a combined 110 to 20. Things were not getting any better, fans were not at the games, and the overall direction of the program was in terrible shape. That's why Collins was finally relieved of his duties tonight, and they might move on from the athletic director as well. We'll find out more about that tomorrow, but for now, Collins is done. So, I have five reasons why Collins failed there. 
Well first, he was doomed to start with the triple option. His goal was to change the Yellow Jackets offense from the triple option to a pro style, and it just didn't work. That requires good recruiting, and it requires patience. That is not something he had, so he was doomed to start. Secondly, I think he needed a lot more time as a head coach before he took that job. Because of moving away from the triple option, they would need a coach who had established success at building a program. He had very little time at Temple to do that. The third reason was he couldn't recruit. While he had a decent first class, he continually got worse, and despite being in the South where there were so many big time recruits, he couldn't get them to commit to his team. Fourthly, the team never got any better throughout his four years, as they were non-competitive to start and were non-competitive at the end. And then finally, all those embarrassing and brutal losses added up. They got shut out by Ole Miss, got shut out by Notre Dame, got shut out by Georgia, and were always the laughing stock. It was only a matter of time before Collins was going to be fired, and those are the reasons why he didn't make it. So who could we look to in the future? Well, one of the first options is Todd Munkin. He's currently the offensive coordinator at Georgia, and with how well they're doing and him being under Kirby Smart, many believe that Munkin could be the guy. A second option I came up with is Charles Huff. He was a former Alabama coach who's now in his second year at Marshall, and while the herd have fallen off the last two weeks, He's a great coach, and he's done well at Marshall. Third, you have to throw in a guy like Jamie Chadwell, who's had consistent success at Coastal Carolina. You have to throw in Sean Elliott, who's won at Georgia State, and then Del McGee, who was a former running backs coach at Bama, and now at Georgia, who has head coaching aspirations in the future. I honestly cannot tell you who they will get, but any of those five candidates would not be bad. It's gonna be a long, long rebuild for whoever decides to coach there, and they're gonna need a lot of time and patience. Overall, the Georgia Tech program is in a pretty bad spot, and I've always liked the Jackets, so it's unfortunate to see where they are. I hope the best for Coach Collins moving forward and whoever they hire next. But what do you think? If you're a Georgia Tech fan, why did Jeff Collins fail? Who do you want them to hire next? And what are your expectations for the program? If you're a fan of another school, give me your thoughts on Collins. Let me know a player or a topic I could cover in my next video. And don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.